What's up everybody and welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips. Today's video we are going to be going over probably one of the, well one of the most important machines in the OR that we utilize in the surgical room and that is the ESU or the Electro Surgical Unit. Uh, also known as the BOVI. It's basically the machine that utilizes monopolar and bipolar cauterization during surgery. This is going to be good. Now to start this off, I wanted to just do a little brief little snippet into the history of the Bovey machine. Uh, it started back in the 1920s. There was a physicist by the name of W.T. Bovey that invented the spark gap generator, which quickly evolved into the electrosurgical generator. And you know, over many different iterations and, and upgrades, it's now what we use today, the electrosurgical unit, or uh, what everybody commonly calls it, the Bovey. So, W.T. Bobby and the Bobby. Kind of cool, you know, you make something way back in history, your name is W.T. Bobby, and everybody refers to your machine for years and years to come as the Bobby machine. So, just a little snippet into the history of that. Now, I don't want to dive deeply into the anatomy of electricity, because that's, that's not what I want to talk about in this video. Uh, you know, atoms, electrons, matter, all that type of stuff. You can read about that in a book. Uh, but let's, let's talk about the definition of electrosurgery. And it's basically the application of an electric current to cauterize or coagulate tissue uh, at the surgical site. Uh, the current flows from a generator to a device or an active electrode that delivers the electric current to the surgical site through the patient or the tissue and it's channeled back to the generator via a dispersive inactive electrode or what we like to call just the grounding pad or the bovi pad. So let's kind of break down that ESU circuit here. We have our generator. Uh, this is on now and this is our generator. The active electrode, the bovi that we'll actually be using on the field is going to be directly plugged in you throw that end off the field to your nurse and the nurse will plug it into the Bovey machine like this and now I have an active electrode. See, I, I push the button and it will not let me use this because we do not have a grounding pad hooked up. This is our grounding pad. Now the grounding pad itself has this polyadhesive kind of electrode goo on it and when applying it to the patient, you always want to be applying it to the fleshy parts of the patient. That means kind of like the thigh, buttocks area, uh, the side of the patient, or you know maybe upper arm uh, are, are all kind of like the big fleshy areas on the human body that you want to place these grounding pads. So once that grounding pad is all hooked up and you have thrown off the, the tail end of this uh, cautery, you will have an active electrode on the field that you can use to cut and coagulate tissue at the surgical site. Uh, as you activate the electrode by using one of the buttons on this Bovey machine, the power, uh, the power source itself will come from the generator down this wire all the way to the tissue of the patient. It will go through the tissue of the patient down to the dispersive pad or the ground pad and it'll go through the wire of the ground pad back to the generator itself. That is the electrosurgical unit circuit. Now something you may have noticed actually on this generator here itself, we have up and down for all of the cut, coag, and bipolar um, uh, settings. So cut and coag, the difference between these two is, is basically just going to be the amperage of, of electricity flowing through that active electrode at the field. If you need it to be cutting much more, you will turn the cut up or you will turn the coag up to a higher number and it will give you a much higher amperage of electricity flowing through that active electrode to help you really, really desiccate that tissue and cauterize what you need to cauterize. Uh, same thing down here, we have different settings, desiccate, full grade, spray. These are basically just different patterns of how the electricity is flowing out of the, uh, the active electrode on the Bovey itself. 
Now what I was just talking about before with the ESU circuit, uh, the active electrode, the, gener or the generator, the active electrode, and the dispersive pad, that's all utilized for monopolar cautery. Uh, that, is, that is one single uh, motion of cautery. You're going from the generator through the patient back to the generator. Now bipolar is something entirely different. Uh, it's similar to the fact that it does uh, coagulate tissue and cauterize the tissue, but it does that in between the two prongs of the actual forcep itself. Let me see if I can get this in focus here. If you can see there, there it is, it's in focus. Okay, we have two little metal, metal tips to the, to the forcep itself. And the electricity, as it's arcing through these tips, the top one will be an active electrode and the bottom one will be the dispersive electrode. So you actually don't even need a, uh, a cautery pad on the patient's you know, body itself. It, it actually does it all through the forcep itself. And this whole forcep is, is the active electrode and the dispersive electrode. Now here are just a couple different examples of different devices that may utilize monopolar or bipolar cauterization. Uh, starting off, we have the robot spatula. This is a monopolar spatula that we utilize for robotic surgery to use to you know, dissect and coagulate tissue. You'll see it a lot in uh, robotic coles. We have a, this is actually a laparoscopic instrument, and this is just a monopolar scissor. So some surgeons may like a cold scissor, and what that means is you're not gonna be hooking up the monopolar cord to it that you see here on the, uh, on the end of it, the little knob. Uh, others may like it hot, so as they're cutting, they're able to step on the foot pedal for the cauterization and utilize that monopolar cautery as they're cutting through the tissue as well. We have our bipolar forcep, which I talked about with you before. And lastly, one more device. This is a, this is a suction cautery. It's basically a suction tip, so it's an open hole. You hook a suction tubing up to it and you can suck fluid through it, but also at the end of it is a metal tip that has monopolar cautery to it. So it can be utilized as suction and cautery at the same time. Now with every one of these different monopolar and bipolar devices, there's also gonna be a cord that comes with it. Uh, some of them utilize the same cord, others do not. Uh, for instance, the robotic cords are robotic specific. They're only utilized for robotic instruments themselves. And you know, as far as some of the other disposable supplies, some of them uh, may have their own specific cord as well. So as far as generators go, this one right here is probably gonna be your most common. Uh, if you're working in a hospital that has nice big booms like this where you have you know, insufflators and cameras and, and uh, Bovi machines already on this whole big console, that's great. And this is gonna be the most common one that you're gonna see. It's just got your basic monopolar and bipolar uh, hookups on this machine. But if you come over here, we have a ligature machine. Uh, this lig ligature machine utilizes monopolar, bipolar, uh, already hooked into the machine itself, but it also has some separate hookups for the ligature uh, supply as well. It's, that's gonna be a whole different video. That's, that's, that's its whole separate thing, uh, but it's a similar form of, of coagulation of tissue. I'll talk about that another time though. And then over here, we have our robotic console over here. So when you buy a robot, obviously, it comes with the surgeon's console, the robot, and this huge tower over here. But inside this tower, we have the hookups for two monopolars and two bipolars. So these generators can come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> so that's essentially how the Bovi works. Now, obviously, one of the scariest, scariest things to happen with uh, any type of cauterization is the possibility of an electrical burn. Now, the reason we have that dispersive electrode is so we do not have any types of electrical burns, but uh, if you improperly apply that pad and there is any open skin, you can have an electrical burn. Uh, I know from experience uh, actually, actually, actually doing surgery and utilizing a bobe. If there is a hole in your glove, 
and you're bovying across you know your rubber glove you will feel an electrical burn you will get a shock if you have a tiny tiny pinpoint hole in your glove and you will feel it and it will hurt like hell it will hurt so bad <laughs> i've seen it multiple times surgeons basically like jumping two feet away from the table because they just have a hole in their glove and they just burn themselves on their finger it hurts so bad and it takes so long for something like that to heal because it, it, it's it's like a deep deep thermal burn and you I mean, you can feel that shock through your whole body, especially if you don't have an, a, any type of dispersive electrode uh, for the electrical current to go back to the generator. You know, it's, it's only the patient that is hooked up to that. So if you, the surgical assistant or, or the surgeon, get shocked with that bobe, man, it freaking hurts and it messes you up. <laughs> and lastly, I just wanted to talk about um, plume. Plume is the term for the, uh, the smoke that comes off of the tissue that's being burned. Now, I've read some articles that say uh, cauterization plume can be just as detrimental as you know, smoking uh, daily. So it's really important uh, when you're at the surgical field and if you're an assistant to have that suction up there, kind of sucking that plume smoke out of there so none of the people at the surgical field have to inhale that that tissue plume you know as we're working i think i'm going to do a, a specific video on on plume itself at a later point but uh, i just thought i'd have i have to put that in here as always thank you guys so much for watching uh, all of the likes and the comments and the shares help out the channel exponentially uh, for everybody out there that does that it really really helps you know, get the videos out there and helps me kind of spread these messages out to, uh, to more and more people. So thank you for that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.